Hello my friend, these guys are moving towards us, they want to kill us, but hey, sometimes we have a problem, like for example with collision. And how do we spot problems with collision, for example? How do we spot problems which are called in game dev bugs? They are called bugs because, well, bugs are not things that we like. We need to like destroy them, we need to smash them, right? We don't like bugs. So that's why they are called bugs. And in order to like look for them, we have a process that we call in game development programming, debugging. So we want to find it and debug to annihilate it, right? And here we have a tab like this. And now, as you can see, we can choose, for example, something like that, visible collision shapes. And now when I run my, oh, so now I can see the shapes of these guys. And for example, when we had a problem like this before, I can see why it happened, right? Okay, now I can see because I didn't get into that. You know, I can spot things now. And well, to solve this probably, I need to do something like this, right? So let's make this a bit smaller. So because of the change, I could, you know, run out of them. I didn't get stuck there. But let's go back to what we did in the last lecture. Notice that we flip this guy, right? Well, that's pretty enough when you are using this type of collision. But what if we had used, for example, something what is called collision polygon 2D, which allows us to, you know, specify exactly the points of this guy, like for example, like this, okay? It's not like you need to do it this way, okay? Let's delete this part. But let's imagine a situation like this. As you can see now, what is changing? Hmm. Only the animated sprite to the is flipped, right? Using this. It's this thing was not flipped. So we've got a problem. You might be saying, hey, this is not a problem, but let's make this nose bigger. <laughs> I have time to let's make it a bit less big. So something like this. Huh. So I can now stand on his nose, right? And also there is a problem because well they also collide with each other, they can't move next to each other. And this nose is not changing the uh, direction, but it should, right? Why it's not? It should change it. So how do we flip it when there is no flip button here? That's a big problem, right? Because, hey, how do we flip it? And notice that animated sprite, it has got it, this doesn't, but why? And this is a very good question. Because when you go into all nodes, notice that the node that is at the top of all nodes, so this is like, as you can see, something that expands everything. It is the base for all scenes. Then we have got the viewport that we haven't talked about, and we have got something what is called canvas item. Canvas item is any item that we've already used for creating, uh, like for example, animated sprite, the collision, and so on, right? So this is like an item element that we put on the scene, on the canvas, on the thing that people see. And this is like something that is used for grouping only. And then here we have something what is called node 2D. And this thing is now a bit more advanced because it says it has a position, rotation, scale, and Z index. And everything that node 2D can do any of these guys below can also do. What does it mean? It means that uh, when we go to collision polygon to this guy can do what to node to D can do. Okay, animated sprite also can do this, and anything new is programmed by somebody else. Okay, so it's like somebody extended this, and now he can do flipping, for example, here and adding the sprites which are animated. But here we have something for creating the polygon for collision, and that's how it works. But why then somebody could flip this? How did he achieve it? Well, when you go to the collision polygon, you will notice that we've got here a transform in the node 2D part. Notice that animated sprite 2D has node 2D, the collision polygon has node 2D, and also it has canvas item, it has node, right? Notice that all the things that were the parent for the collision polygon, right? So notice that when we go to the collision here, right? So this thing has got everything that this has this and this, right? Notice. Okay, I have access to node, canvas item, node 2D. And this is like specialized node, collision, polygon to do that has this. But to achieve whatever the guy achieved here, he based on this thing here, on node 2D. Because notice that we have got here something what is called scale, and it allows us to scale things, which means get it bigger or smaller. When you want to go to the default value, you hit this thing. And then if you want to flip things, you need to type here minus before the number. So when I hit minus one, you will notice that we flipped it, but we also flipped it not only horizontally using the X, but also vertically using Y. Why did it happen even though I only typed it here? It's because we have got a chain here. When we unlock this chain, now when we change something to this, as you can see, we change only X and we flip this guy. So really, somebody who made this property here, who created this thing, in the background he is just using the scaling and he just changed the X to the minus value and that's all. <laughs> Fun, right? And well, we can do the same now. And to be honest, when we go to the script, uh, 
We can solve it, of course, using AI, right? Notice that I ask. Collision Polygen to do doesn't flip with animated sprite to deep. Change it, please. And oh, okay, so you need to do something like this additionally. And here is the rest of the code. I can now copy it and it works fine. So you wouldn't need to, you know, write it. But even though this course is mainly about AI, I want to show you the process of thinking uh, because you need to know how things tie together. Otherwise, you won't be able to even properly ask questions to AI to get the response that you want, right? And I also show you that programming is not really that hard. So there is a lot of code here. Do I need to understand this code in order to just change the part that we are looking for? So we are looking for what? For flipping, right? And we've got already a code that does it. So notice here. Do you see anywhere flip? I don't. So let's find it. Oh, it's okay. So it's here. And remember that any line here is like an instruction. So it's really like telling what computer must do. And this flipping thing happens here. So it means that, yeah, it happened here. We told computer to access this guy, animated sprite 2D, and then access what? Flip H. And then we change it using the equal sign to true. Because on means true. False means off. Okay? And otherwise, we change it to false. And, well, this is a condition that checks wh what's the position of the player. Okay? Based on the enamel rotation. How it works? Do you need to know? Well, no, no, not so much, right? We just know that it checks it. And to be honest, you can ask how to check things like that using AI. Because t for physics, for things like math, hey, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Really, all these things can, uh, can be answered by AI pretty fast. It's like really good at it. So you know that this checks if the player position is good and it updates the enamel rotation, right? But we also want to update the data collision. How do we do it? We need to select this node this element, put it here, and then use the dot, right? And afterwards, we need to access what? When we are in the collision, we change the scale x value to minus one. So let's access scale. And now let's assign here minus one. Let's see what will happen, okay? When I run the code, you will notice that it crashed. We've got here an error. It says invalid send index scale. And it means that we assigned a value that was not expected here. Because notice that when we are looking here at the scale, it has two values. So to be honest, it stores two values, not one. So if you want to change the, this that, that part of the scale, you need to access it. So with the dot, we access x. So to be honest, it's like a path, right? We access the collision polygon, then the scale, then the x, and we change it to minus one. And now you will notice that we need to stop the program, run it again, and hey, they change the direction, but only once. Hey, but, but we are moving forward. And that's how you program, really. It's not like you do not make mistakes. You'll make plenty of them. So otherwise, we need to set it back to one, right? The same way as it happens here. It flipped to what? To false and from true to true false. And now we need to set it back to scale to one. And now, as you can see, what happens? Hey, everything works like we wanted. The collision is also changing the direction using the scale part. And well, AI sold it, of course, faster than us. But it's because I had to, you know, tell you how things work in this engine. But you should understand now that it's not like you always need to depend on AI, right? You don't need to always depend on you know, external sources. Play, make errors, because it's normal. You have got this debug menu that allows you to see collision shapes, for example, to see what's going on. Now, as you can see, we don't need to see it. And uh, well, when we go to enemy, we need to change this pointy nose now back, right? What, what's more is important, really, again, is that it's worth learning programming even if AI does most of the job. Because things like this, you can change really very fast, right? If you understand what's going on in this editor. And it's not like it's going to be faster if you copy things here. For simple things, I highly recommend using this. And also, not, on, not only for simple, but abstract things. Uh, because, you know, right now we are accessing, for example, this variable here. But it's not the best way to do it. Why? Maybe it's not the, not, not the topic for this lecture. But these things can be written better, more universally. AI just solves a problem because we asked for a specific problem, it gave us a specific solution. And it, we didn't ask how to, you know, properly put this project first, right? We didn't ask her how to analyze it. So there are some, you know, things that we could write better, for example. We can ask her now. But you need to even know that you should ask about it. And to be honest, that can be a good exercise. Ask her. What can be written better in this course? How to make it more universal, right? Maybe you learn something about programming. Remember that ask her at the end to explain things like to, for example, eight years old. The explanation will be 10,000 times better. So have fun. Thank you very much.